Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Continuity. You love to see it. Except for the bad continuity in life. Take me, for example. I'm still the only person standing up for the rights of fedora hats. And as each day goes on, I keep realizing I have more and more flaws that keep me from being better than I could be. This is a TV show. And something that every TV show has is continuity. Every series handles continuity in a different way. Whether they make the show have character arcs or stories that span several episodes of a season, or it's a loose structure with an overarching big picture continuity. Spongebob, on the other hand, some people consider there to be no f***ing continuity at all, and times where some of the lore of the series is broken later down the line. While that can be a little true, it's those pieces of shit that just love throwing the Spongebob continuity out the window. But when we look at the main series itself, there's more continuity than you may think. So for funsies, I decided to dig deep and find some instances that show that Spongebob isn't completely void of continuity. But before we start, I have some rules I put into play. Number one, we're mostly going over episodes that talk about the events from previous episodes. Something like when Spongebob sings the fun song in episode 517 CHUMS from season 13, this won't be counted because even though the song is a reference, Spongebob doesn't talk about singing it with Plankton in that episode, or when Plankton skims Spongebob with the Krabby Patty. That is a reference, yes, but more so just pathetically pandering to the hardcore fans more so than giving it any actual meaning. Number 2. In the minor seasons, there's a lot of references to the early seasons of the show, but a lot of those are just seeing an object or something like that from a previous episode in that frame. For example, this shot from episode 407, Lost and Found from season 10, shows the souffle that Squidward made in episode 8, Naughty Nautical Neighbors from season 1. That won't be included because that is more of an easter egg rather than a continuity example. Maybe another day we can talk about those, but not this time. Number 3. For every example of continuity, there's three examples of that continuity getting broken. So I'm going to try to avoid talking about continuity getting broken, even if an example of continuity has it getting ruined later. Which also means we'll be avoiding the spin-offs for obvious reasons. And number four, I'm bound to miss some continuity examples here and there. As we cover more episodes of the series, I'm sure we'll find some more continuity examples, so we'll be returning to this topic later on. And now that we have the rules established, let's jump in. So let's start with some obvious examples of continuity in the show. At the very beginning of the series, the main staples of the show were established, like Spongebob getting his job at the Krusty Krab in episode 1, Help Wanted, meeting Sandy Cheeks in episode 3, Tea at the Trito, meeting Mr. Krabs' moral enemy, Plankton, in episode 7, Plankton, and Murray Man and Barnacle Boy in episode 12, Murray Man and Barnacle Boy. While he was never shown meeting Pearl, he does know who he is, which is proven by episode 24, The Chaperone. These are some of the most important core elements of the series, and they never tried to retcon anything like this in the series in the future. Another clear example of continuity involves talking about Christmas three months early in September. I've seen decorations for the 4th of July in April, before Easter. You tell me why. Episode 56, Christmas Who, from Season 2, establishes that Christmas wasn't celebrated in Bikini Bottom. Ain't you never seen a Christmas tree before? Christmas Who? What? Sandy, being the only resident of Bikini Bottom from above the surface, tells Spongebob about Christmas, and Spongebob tells everybody else in Bikini Bottom. And ever since, Christmas is regularly celebrated in Bikini Bottom, as evident by there being future Christmas episodes, like episodes 335, It's a Spongebob Christmas from season 8, and 518, Spongebob's Road to Christmas from season 13. Christmas and Santa Claus are also mentioned in some episodes, like episode 69, The Secret Box from season 2, episode 139, Wishing You Well from season 4, and 453, Goons on the Moon from season 11, despite none of them being Christmas specials. Episode 91, Snowball Effect from Season 3, also shows Spongebob and Gary wearing Santa Claus hats, implying that Christmas is a thing in Bikini Bottom now. I have my own Santa hat, which I always wear on Christmas. Except now, when I'm talking about Spongebob continuity. Or Christmas. Another obvious example is Mr. Krabs and Plankton's relationship. 
While they were always shown to be enemies, there were a few times where they did team up in some way. The first time this happened was episode 151, Best Frenemies from season 4. The first time anything at all was mentioned about them being friends in any way was the Swindon Squarepants movie, but that was Plankton putting on a show for his interview with Perch Perkins. The first time where it was implied that they were friends in their past was episode 121, Crabs vs. Plankton from season 4. To, you know, say hello to my once good friend, Mr. Krabs, what? Their childhood friendship was finally revealed in episode 156, Friend or Foe, from season 5. There was a time when Plankton and I were best friends. And tells the story of how they became friends in the first place. Their past friendship was mentioned a few other times later on. Like episodes 272, The Main Drain, from season 7, and 295, The Other Patty, from season 8 for example. While there have been several flashbacks of these characters as kids, no flashbacks in the main series ever tried to retcon them being friends. In addition to Mr. Krabs, there's the Krusty Krab 2. The Krusty Krab 2 only appears in the Spongebob Squarepants movie, and as we all know, that movie takes place at the very end of the series. The show knows this too, and even as early as episode 118, Fear of a Krabby Patty from season 4, the first episode that aired after the movie, it's clear that it still takes place before the movie. Even the two other theatrical films, the SpongeBob movie Sponge Out of Water and the SpongeBob movie Sponge on the Run, take place before the first movie. While those were obvious examples of SpongeBob continuity that add to the lore, let's move on to talking about examples of continuity between episodes. Specifically, episodes that actually do mention previous episodes. Let's start off with episode 31, Suds from season 1. In that episode, Spongebob gets the Suds. Duh! Way later on, in episode 285, Welk Attack from season 7, Spongebob mentions the time he's had the Suds. After all, I've had the Suds! Well, there you go. There are some positives in even the worst seasons of the show. Similarly, episode 47, Bubble Buddy, has the iconic one-off character, Bubble Buddy! Or so you thought he was one-off. Bubble Buddy was actually shown in later seasons. He appeared in episodes 320, Bubble Buddy Returns from season 8, and 458, Bubble Town from season 11, and has supporting roles that get the plot going in those episodes. And both times, SpongeBob mentions that Bubble Buddy is his old friend. It's from my old friend, Bubble Buddy. Hey, it's my old pal, Bubble Buddy. Even Mr. Krabs remembers Bubble Buddy. Uh, Bubble Buddy, huh? That guy still owes me money. Speaking of iconic characters, Doodle Bob. He makes his first appearance in episode 68, Frank and Doodle from season 2. He wreaks havoc, and when SpongeBob erases him, he comes back with a vengeance. Twice! Episode 437, Doodle Dimension from Season 11, sees the return of Doodle Bob, and Spongebob remembers him just by the look alone. Moving back to referencing previous episodes, Sandy. Episode 188, To Save a Squirrel from Season 5, she teaches Spongebob and Patrick about the phrase, eat or be eaten. Out in the wild, it's eat or be eaten. And that phrase is repeated several times throughout the episode by this old coot in a cave, who was later revealed to be Sandy in disguise. A few seasons later, in episode 338, the good Krabby name from Season 8, Spongebob dresses up as a giant Krabby Patty to promote the Krusty Krab. When Patrick sees Spongebob, he thinks it's just a giant Krabby Patty and remembers the eat or be eaten lesson he learned in To Save a Squirrel. There's only one thing to do, it's eat or be eaten. Another clear reference happens way later on. In episode 420, The Legend of Bukini Bottom from season 11, Plankton mentions he was inside Spongebob's brain before. I was in there once. Liar! He was actually inside Spongebob's brain twice. He went in there in episode 249, The Inside Job from season 7, and the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water. But the inside of his brain looks different both times. When the Flying Dutchman goes inside Spongebob's brain in Bukini Bottom, it looks more similar to how it does in Sponge Out of Water than The Inside Job. It still looks different here too, but Plankton still recalls being in Spongebob's brain before, so therefore, it's continuity. Let's continue with episodes that have a spooky theme. In episode 35, Rock Bottom from season 1, Swindon and Patrick are in Rock Bottom. Swindon is left behind after missing a bus and ends up seeing some of the Rock Bottom residents. 
Later on in episode 409, out of the picture from season 10, Squidward goes to rock bottom and sees some familiar characters. SpongeBob follows him and states that they're his friends, clearly remembering them from the last time he was there. Another character everybody remembers is Nosferatu, for better or for worse. He made his debut in episode 71, Graveyard Shift from season 2. Nosferatu! He was shown at the very end of the episode, and this episode was about a night shift at the Krusty Krab. Way later on, in episode 457, The Night Patty from season 11, which is also about a night shift at the Krusty Krab, SpongeBob sees Nosferatu again, and while nothing is directly mentioned from that episode, his reaction shows that he clearly remembers him from his previous appearance. Nosferatu! Let's move away from one-off characters and talk about main characters. In episode 99, Wet Painters from season 3, SpongeBob talks about Mr. Krabs' first dollar he ever earned. In Friend or Foe, it was revealed that he got it when he started selling Krabby Patties as a kid. And that first dollar was shown again in episode 440, Bottle Burglars from season 11. Speaking of money, we also see his first dime. It was first shown in episode 94, Can You Spare a Dime from season 3. And then it was shown again in episode 388, Mutiny on the Krusty from season 9. Now sure, it does look different in both episodes, but it was still the same concept itself, so I want to count it this time. Let me live. But now let's move away from Mr. Krabs' money and talk about characters as a whole. Moving back to To Save a Squirrel, SpongeBob and Patrick were shown to be afraid of a cricket, an insect from the real world, which Sandy knows all too well about. And she wasn't scared either and sent the cricket back to the surface. This is consistent with episode 50, Wormy from season 2, where SpongeBob and Patrick see the butterfly and instantly become scared. And Sandy was the only one who knew about that insect and took care of the problem. Speaking of problems, Gary has a problem that he doesn't want to take baths. This tray was first shown in episode 66, Gary Takes a Bath from season 2, where the entire episode was about him trying not to take a bath. This hatred of baths is shown later on in the series when he tries to avoid a bath in episodes 283, Shellback Shenanigans from season 7, and 314, Pet Sitter Pat from season 8. It's nice to see that that's consistent. Speaking of avoiding shit, The Flying Dutchman. I'm the Flying Dutchman. In episode 65, Shanghai from season 2, he has a dining sock and states that he can't eat without it. Give me back my sock! Everyone knows I can't eat without it! In episode 42, Your Shoes Untied from season 2, the Flying Dutchman has a sock he sometimes wears over his ghostly tail. It does look different in both shots from both episodes, but I still consider that to be his dining sock. But that's not the only shortcoming we're talking about today. SpongeBob! Episode 5, Ripped Pants from Season 1, is the first instance where he is shown to be not very strong when he struggles to lift a stick with two, Count em, two. marshmallows on it. His weak nature shows in several episodes later. I can't mention all of them, but the only examples I can think of off the top of my head right now are Episodes 22, Muscle Bob Buff Pants from Season 1, where he can barely do anything physical at all, Episode 95, No Weenies Allowed from Season 3, where he's too weak to open a new bottle of ketchup. Episode 122, Have You Seen This Snail from Season 4, where he was struggling to carry a bag of snail food. This snail food is really heavy. Episode 222, Dear Vikings from Season 6, where he struggles to pick up an axe. And Episode 372, Larry's Gym from Season 9, where he can't lift anything at all. Not even a cotton swab with two cotton balls. But now let's move away from working and move on to driving. As we all know, Spongebob can't drive. Episode 9, Boating School from Season 1, was the first time we see him failing his driving test. That episode said he failed 37 times. Meow. Okay, 38. It's actually 39 by the end of this episode, where he fails after he realizes Patrick's helping him out was cheating. <laughs> cheating! Later on in episode 133, Mrs. Puff Gear Fired from season 4, it was stated that Spongebob has now failed his test a total of 1,258,056 times. But then an explosion later on in the episode destroyed his dossier, erasing his permanent record. And later on in the same season, episode 148, Driven to Tears, it was stated he failed 57 times 
which became 58 only a few seconds later. All this stuff is pretty sad, but let's move away from shortcomings and talk about phobias. In Wishing You Well, Squidward gets trapped down a well with Swindon and Patrick and becomes claustrophobic. If you don't stand so close, you're making me claustrophobic. Way later on in Bottle Burglars, Squidward mentions that phobia again. Wait! I'm claustrophobic! I'm glad I'm not claustrophobic. And I think that's a good place to wrap things up for now. After a little bit of babbling, I have proven that Spongebob actually has some continuity, contrary to popular belief. Despite what everybody will say about the worst seasons of the show, season 6, 7, and 13, even they have some continuity, even if it's not a lot. I'm actually impressed I was able to talk about a lot of continuity examples today. And there's even more that I didn't cover. I'm sure I'll return to this topic eventually. Keeping continuity is a good thing, and it really does help enhance the experience of a show or a franchise. And even though I do have a lot of flaws, I'm okay with it now, because I've learned that being flawed is part of being a human being, and I'm proud to be a human being. Even if I'm the only human being standing up for the rights of fedora hats.